Hi guys, we are in Mandalay. We have been here for two days and we have spent $17 per day. Go ahead and check out our video and when we come back, we'll tell you how you can do it just as cheap. Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich. Even though we spent two days in Mandalay, we only spent one night because we arrived on a sleeper bus and we left on a sleeper train. 
The one night that we spent was at Fortune Hotel and it was $14. The sleeper bus we arrived on was 10,000 drop per person. The bus was supposed to arrive at I think 5 or 6 in the morning and actually arrived at closer to 3 in the morning. And we haven't actually mentioned this in any of our other videos, but one of the main ways that we save money while traveling is to walk away from a bus station before we get like a tuk-tuk or a taxi or a shared ride to our hotel. This was a little bit difficult here because they were literally harassing us. It was like 3 in the morning and we could not get these people to leave us alone. We were able to eventually find a shared taxi for, I don't even know, like a sixteenth of the price. We drove down south to two cities called Inwa and Sagang. It took us about 45 minutes driving. If you go to Mandalay, these two cities are must-see. I would say they're better than the actual city of Mandalay. And when you go to Sagang, it's just like thousands of pagodas. You can just see everywhere. It's crazy. Two places we recommend you visit in Sagang are the Yuman Thons Caves and the Sitigo International Buddhist Academy. Oh, we gotta talk about the monk sweater. <laughs> So we were climbing the like thousand steps to get to the top of the Yuman Thong's caves and there was this monk who stopped us and he started speaking with us and asked us where we were from and then he gave us a present and it was a monk sweater and we were very excited so I gave him a present. Very excited. <laughs> it was a little bracelet and then he started asking for donations and we were like, oh. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we gave him like a thousand jot and as we were walking away, another couple of tourists came up and he's like, hello to them and asked their names and where they were from. And then he gave them my present bracelet that I had just given to him. <laughs> for a donation. For a donation. <laughs> and then continued to ask us for even more donations. Yeah. Needless to say, I'm pretty sure this guy was not an actual monk. All right. Yeah. <laughs> The second day, we did a half-day bicycle rental for 1,500 jot each to explore the main city of Mandalay. We'll put a list at the end of the video of all the amazing things to see here, but our favorite was the Kutho Da Pagoda. This was really interesting because they actually consider it to be like the biggest book in the world. What it is is these big stone kind of tablets and they have inscribed words in them like pages of a book and each of these tablets have their own little pagoda and there's hundreds of them. It's really interesting. Another place of interest was the Shui Nada Teak Monastery, and we also thought this was really beautiful. Food here was actually really cheap. We were finding stuff for 600 to 1,000 drop per plate. Our favorite is the rice noodles. These were really, really good, and we also found tons of like rice and curry and just other regular Myanmar food. There is a zone fee for Mandalay. It's 10,000 drop per person, but you can avoid this fee if you skip the Grand Palace, which honestly, I think you should skip anyways. It wasn't that cool and skip the Teak Monastery. Tonight we are leaving on a sleeper train to Bagan, so go ahead and check out that video, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye!